my name is Pin. Uh, Kent. Rebecca. Adam. Jesse. Hey, my name is Tom. <laughs> oh, you're saying it because. Uh -huh. Oh. Uh, I sang it because Pen did. I sang it because I'm a. I'm full of life, man. <laughs> uh, this, Happy this, go lucky, dude. This is the musical episode. It is though. Oh, okay. uh, it's just just vacillating. Just vacillations. <laughs> the natural vacillations of life. Uh, I remember when we got when we got this episode, uh, the outline said, uh, Finn play or they play two uh, bad songs and then one song which is the best, most incredible song you've ever heard, uh, ever, <laughs> and it opens this door and and. Uh, because it is the best song ever, and I felt like I was under a lot of pressure to do that. So we ended up trying to make it more about emotional honesty than about the most awesome song you've ever heard, because I wasn't sure if I could actually do that. Um, Sorry. <laughs> it sounds like you thought you maybe could do it. Um, not, not really. <laughs> uh, and and Dorlord, a relative of Keeper, yeah, Pen draws these kind of frog legs on characters sometimes. And they're really sort of creepy, but great. There's another Steve Agee uh, voice. Yeah, it counts. I'll get you know, the hmm. <laughs> it's all Steve Agee. We wrote out dialogue for all that. He's supposed to actually be saying something. I mean, the intonation is that he could be saying something. Crazy squats. Get back here, you thieving! This might have been the first episode with all these characters. Featured at once. Definitely the most you've seen of Marceline and Bubblegum in the same place. Uh, and I think we were mostly going off of um, Are you okay? what we knew about them from Go With Me. Uh, Which is not much. Yeah. Right. Well, it's actually just almost that first interaction where says, PB gives Marceline a withering look. And Marceline kind of gives what? her a good-natured teasing back. No command. Save for a song from a... And then we extrapolated. What is this grip uh, I believe it's pronounced <laughs> extrapolate. <laughs> <laughs> um, I got a hat to reference for uh, Marceline's hat. I had it on a <gasps> head I remember that. in the office because I really wanted to be able to do it in three dimensions. Penn, you saw it. And you said, uh, I said, oh, I got this hat for, for the episode. And you said, no, you just really wanted that hat. Just admit it. And then I did want that hat. But it was a good excuse. I wanted that hat, too. And I actually uh, went out looking for a hat like that after seeing that hat in your office. Got that, princess? Wow. I eventually found one that... <laughs> Could work for a, a, a male a person. <laughs> <laughs> a male man, to <laughs> speak. Uh, and then this um, is actually the last of. I wrote this song after the ending song. Oh, really? I was really st uh, stuck on this one. Um, and I, I got to the point. I, I, it needed it needed to be done, and I was really freaking out about it. And um, I, you don't. I remember like I, I uh, Ian, Ian was at home. I sent Ian out, and I was like, "Don't go back. I need to do this." And when he came back, I was like a, a total mess. And I performed, but I was done, and I performed it for him, and I was like a wreck. And it was really appropriate. And I think all that wreckness is is still in there. I remember when you when you were gonna cut a line from the song, and I said, "Oh, you should uh, just you know." Uh, I uh, I cried a lot when I wrote this. This is really hard. Uh, oh, please don't cut that line. And um, then you didn't. And then I was really embarrassed. And now I'm embarrassed again. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know uh, that. I didn't know you were such a holy cry baby. <laughs> Callous uh, monster. Why well, like I telling this story a lot about how I cry when I listen to your songs and I like tear up in the animatics room because I'm sitting there all alone editing the thing. And your songs are on there, and they're super intense, you know, and they're, and they're tugging my heartstrings, and I'm just like, Ugh, like, by myself in that room. And it, it was a bummer going in that room, because I knew what was going to happen. It was like a torture chamber, like, walking into Animax. But it's funny. It's I like telling that story. I've never told... I don't think I've told it in front of you, but I've told it in front of, like, big crowds of people, and it's always... <laughs> gets a laugh when I talk about how sad I am in this little room listening to your songs. Oh, this was a... I was, I, this was really based off of an experience I had. I was, uh, I had a, an apartment mate, a roommate, just, just after college, and um, we, didn't, we didn't know each other very well, uh, and, but then slowly, I, you know, I'm a slob, and she 
uh, really didn't like me. Our, our personalities kind of clashed, and I found myself just trying and trying to make it up to her while at the same time being angry and angry that I was stuck with this person who was just making me crazy. Like, I, I, the, and the more mad I got, the more I wanted her to like me, and it was a really uncomfortable, uh, just awful feeling. Uh, cause I didn't, I didn't, I wanted to be friends with this person so badly, but I just could not stand oh, them. It was making me insane. Uh, it's such a specific feeling and I was trying to get at that with them, that they had this falling out and now, uh, it's, you know, uh, the more she wants Bubblegum to like her, the angrier she is that she has to feel that way. A song about noodles? No! Well, I can relate to that. Maybe not. <laughs> But like exactly but I know I, I get mad sometimes when I have to like when I'm feeling sad or scared like I was talking a little bit ago and I was scared because there were ghosts and it was just, I was getting so mad that I was not content I was just like mad that I had to feel anything other than lazy contentness <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to lay on the couch to be happy but I'm afraid so I'm mad I, think I guess that's a little different. It's a, yeah. <laughs> but I think it's, it's the same thing because it's like, it's, it sort of stops being about your frustration with something other than yourself, you know? It's, that's what makes it so painful. Like, it, it's, it's your problem at that point. You can't, you know, you could, you could change it in yourself. That's what makes it so hard when you can't. It's, it's weakness. One more time? It's frustrating. <laughs> yeah, weakness is frustrating. Miscalculated. Stamp it out. Looks like you aren't as perfect as you thought. Remove all emotion. You can't judge me anymore. Yeah. Oh, this used to be a little more intense, I think. All right. Time Bubble out, Game said something even meaner. Uh, to, more intense than that? Well, to yeah. earn, well, to earn getting, well, not that you, it's okay to spit on anybody ever. Never but, okay. But <laughs> she, she got in one last line, and that was enough to drive Marceline <laughs> over the top. I've spit on cars before. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> That's really bad for the paint, right? <laughs> When I was in high school, I used to spit on, spit everywhere. I'd spit on the floors of, of the room that I was in. I thought it was awesome. Because I was like, I was breaking that, I was, I was breaking that barrier, that spit barrier in my mind that you couldn't spit on the floor. <laughs> you can't. It doesn't go anywhere. It just sits there forever, years. You Look can. <laughs> I did it in high school. You can do it. Do, do you remember what the line was, Adam, that she said that was so mean? She called her like train wreck, tra train wreck queen, I think. <laughs> Can't even say those really words. It rolls off the tongue. All right, well, maybe that's why we cut it. <laughs> Twain wreck. Maybe if you sway it like a wavy. Twain wreck. <laughs> I wrote this one while I was cooking. Um, at least the, the beginning of it. What were you cooking? What am I to you? I was cutting onions for something. I remember cutting onions and writing that everyone's a bubblegum part. Uh, this, song, this song is really about um, how I felt working on the show. Uh, I, and this was really my first job, and I just loved everyone I was working with so much, especially you, Adam. Oh, man. Uh, and it was really strange for me because, you know, every, everyone was a cartoonist, and uh, all, that meant so much to me to be friends with all these amazing cartoonists, but it was work, too, so I just couldn't tell where work ended and, and friendship began. And I felt like Finn is in a similar situation. He's a, you know, what is he to Jake and what is he to Marceline and what is he to Bubblegum? He's, he feels like he has these relationships with them, but he's sort of working for Bubblegum and he, what is he to Marceline? You know, he's just, for, you know, she messes with him. And then he sort of has forced interaction with Jake because they're, you know, they just live together. So he, his, his big honest breakthrough is that he doesn't know if they care about him, but he has to tell them that he, he cares about them. Uh, so that's how, I, that's how I tried to make everything in this episode come from a real place for me. Uh, that's what, that was my secret. That's what it's really about. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's real sweet. You make me cry. Which, who's Marceline? <laughs> <laughs> Gosh. Oh, you know, Marceline is sort of, uh, the, the person I kind of based Marsha Lee off of, like, I, I had these friends in college who were, I felt were so much cooler than me. They would hang out with me, but I, I would feel like such a dork. It was a really important relationship for me, but I, you know, I was never quite, quite sure what it was. It was sort of based off that. 
What's he trying to say? I totally get it. You know, when you when you know someone who's just so sarcastic and so cool, but you know it's because you know they really care deeply about things and they can't express that, and then you have this friendship with them, and it's like, which part of you am I friends with? I, just, I love the strong actors that I'm with him beaten up. You did eyeball turn red? <laughs> Why didn't do that? It's gross. <laughs> Here's your controller, Bimo. Ipikaya, yay! Marceline, here's your rock shirt. Hey, that's not. It's mine. That's mine. You kept the shirt. Oh yeah, and the, and the shirt. Yeah. Um, Marceline's it, uh, means a lot uh, to me. But you never wore it. Dude, I wear it all the time. As uh, it, it was uh, for a band. That's it was a band shirt. shirt. It was really worn in. It was Marceline? really comfortable. It was like my favorite shirt. Wait a second, I told wait him a about second. it. I said I put it in this you thing, and he said, "You, just you know what's going on with that shirt these days?" No, I didn't. Um, no way. You're cut. I, I, I the, you my, that shirt of mine. I, I no, can't. No, that shirt. That, oh, the shirt itself. Yeah. Um, oh, it turned pink. Oops. Wait, what? the shirt. Oh, the shirt turned pink. Just in that last <laughs> shot, because we, we had to recolor. Yeah, yeah, I got recolored in every mm -hmm. shot except that shot. I know they made that shirt. Well, the thing is, I, I, it, I was so upset because I lost that shirt, and then I was like, I hope they make. That shirt, and then I'll have it again. <laughs> uh, but uh, I feel like I monopolized that. I'm sorry. It's good, Rebecca. It's what people want to hear. The beef. About my, yeah. about, uh, sure. They want to hear, hear you're beef. an emotional creature, so they can connect to you. Because <laughs> we sound like detached <laughs> monsters. <laughs> <laughs> like, 